what I'll be showing off to you tonight. This is going to be Cartouche. I'll zoom in so we can see all the details. Granted, this is a prototype setup version on TTS. I was, they were unable to get a physical copy to me, but I still enjoyed playing this digitally and look forward to seeing what physical components they do use. This is going to be Cartouche, um, designed by Jeff Fraser and Peter C. Hayward. Now, Peter is also affectionately known as uh, Bluebeard or Beard.Blue. He is an Aussie now living in the U.S., but when you see him at conventions, he likes to have his hair and his beard dyed blue. Now, he's most also well known for uh, because he owns Jelly Bean Games that produces a lot of family friendly games such as Hidden Panda and other easy to learn um, short pocket sized games. Um, there's also he has oh, what are the names of them? There's like Treasure Hunters, I believe is might be the name of it. But a couple of like cards a lot of them are kind of card pack games, fit in your pocket, travel games. Uh, but of course, Cartouche is a bit larger than that and probably a bit more thinky, so I can see why it, he may not be wanting to publish it under Jelly Bean. But regardless, the company that will be releasing this is going to be Coffee Bean Games. And let me verify that how you can find that coffee bean games and we'll get that in the chat for everyone yeah so you if you want to tag them or find them online they're going to be under play coffee bean as coffee bean games may have already been taken as a handle but play Coffee Bean for Coffee Bean Games. This may be one of their first titles, but for a first title, it is a great way to jump into the industry as, with a new company. This is going to be a tile drafting and tile laying game with a little bit of resource gathering and management. So overall, the for a unique concept in that for the tile placement it's not just uh, packing your tiles together it's uh, watching both where you place the tiles and where you don't place because the negative space between tiles is just as critical in this game as what the tiles themselves are or, or touch now, granted, I've played this at two and three players, so let's, I want to verify a one player setup. So one player, we need 20 of these cards. This deck of cards right here, I need to shuffle and then remove. I'll need 20 of them, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's drop that. I can confirm that has I misclicked by one, so I'm going to add one more to it. Uh, take all these extra cards out of the way. Okay. Now let's go to the solo setup mode. So, slow reference card. We're going to draft remaining cards and tiles. You go into an opponent. Place play as normal. Score your opponent goes first, and may score each storage you once. Okay, so let's go to the actual rule book. So in this, we're going to have tiles uh, that consist of different colors. They could be red, blue, yellow, white, or a combination of two of those colors. When placed on the on the mural, because we are revealing the mural of a long forgotten pharaoh who was once removed from history, that we have to reinstate her story. So Queen hits up, so yeah, I probably said that completely wrong, but it's still fun to attempt to say. 
After she died, her successors tried to erase her from history. Her image was chiseled off the stone walls in her royal name. Her cartouche was removed from murals. So, in cartouche, your archaeologist tasked with restoring the ancient Egyptian queen's murals. So, let me dig into the cards a little bit. So, set up. Um, I've taken the extras off here for easy, faster loading for myself, but we each get a mural board, these Ankh tokens. So we have an achievement board in the middle, which I've shown off a little bit. Bags of tokens, and I've stored our story cards up here. We're going to have advanced achievement cards, which we won't be using. I'm going to show off the beginner ones for this game. And let's see. So we shuffled uh, the achievement cards and deal. So yes, the achievement cards are already out. You can use three random ones typically. Once you get used to playing, we're going to place all the, the tokens and the wild scarab tokens and tiles off to the side ready to use. So we're going to have to turn to a different page to verify something else for the solo play, which I'll get to in just a moment. I kind of want to talk over some of the rules real quick for y'all. So all the animal tiles we've put into the drawstring bag, or in this case, it's a draw bag down here, all the tiles. Uh, we each choose a, choose a color, takes our mural board reference card, the onks of our color, and shuffle the story cards. Uh, the starting story cards and deal with one face up to each player. So I'm going to take shuffle and take one starting story card, which I'll leave above my board over here. We'll flip it, and I'll explain some of these as they as we use them. Uh, here we go. We'll go over some of them right now. So the one on top of my board right now it shows an animal of some type or symbol encased in a box. This is called a chamber. So on your board, as you lay tiles, you can use the edge of the board and encased within the tiles as you create an enclosed chamber that en encases that one symbol. Occasionally, we'll have a card that has two different boxes, one symbol in each. So that means you have to have two different chambers, one enclosing one symbol, one enclosing the other. Now, these chambers can be of any size on the board, down to one square upwards of potentially the whole board in a sense um, just the whole board is not in its own chamber so that'll make sense in a moment when I go over the achievement but as long as it only has the symbol shown encased within tiles on the edge of the board you can essentially score this card now some other options in this game are river stories that essentially means you need to be placing tiles in such a way that you create a continuous touching set of blue spots on the tiles that touch the corresponding symbols on this card, being a blue and a white on your actual mural board. So as long as there's a continuous stream or river on the tile of blue, such that it touches at least one blue and one white, that story card could score. And then this one is pretty straightforward. During the game, as you place tiles, you can earn tokens for placing, say, a blue tile next to a blue symbol on your board, gaining a token. You can turn in those tokens for card for these stories for scoring. I do like the fun they had with the player who most recently walked like an e ancient Egyptian takes the first player marker. So if you like to dance, you may have danced like an Egyptian at some point and get to go first in this game. So there's going to be drafting and placing in this game. Typically, each round you're going to end up drafting two items, be it two tiles, two story cards, or one of each which will make sense as I shut off the game. So there's 10 rounds total. So you could have up to 20 tiles total, but you wouldn't be picking up story cards to score, so you have to balance what you pick up when. OK. 
Okay, let me find these solo rules as that's what I'll be learning tonight to show off to you. Now there's some special things as you score so many things and score into this achievement board you get your onks which give you bonuses which I'll go over as they occur. Solo, here we go. So set up, follow the directions to set up a two player game with the following exceptions. Remove story cards from the deck until there are 20 cards. Done. Set up two mural boards, one for yourself and one for the AI. Do not deal the AI a starting story card. Uh, return the first player marker to the box. Find the solo reference card, place it next to your board. Okay, so we're going to take that solo card right here, place it next to my board, and let's copy that board. Have a second one ready for the AI down here. And gameplay draft phase players one, story cards dealt. Okay, so I'll be pulling out two story cards and three tiles. During the draft, deal out three and two. Take any two tiles, any two story, or one of each as normal. Do not discard the remain remaining. Instead, place any remaining story cards in your opponent's completed area next to the board. Oh. So they're going to be scoring if I don't take that card. There are multiple story cards of the same type. Move them down and stack them in order left to right. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Then place any remaining tiles above the achievement board. Divide the tiles by animal. Place tiles with only snake or cat animals above the first achievement card. Then place tiles with only human. Before scoring your own stories and achievements, determine whether your opponent completes one or more. Okay, we'll have to test that out each round and see how it happens. So let's just jump into this and show it off. So in the solo mode, I'll be drawing, pulling two cards out, flipping them, now bear in mind because of the artwork and all of the different shapes they've achieved in this game, there is a slight loading delay you'll see on my screen occasionally as I pull tiles out of this bag, that's just it loading the graphic. Okay, so let's take a look at what came out. So as you can see, we have actually two different chamber style story cards. Uh, one that wants to encase a blue and a white symbol only. And once you score this, that black mark means you're going to have to put a black token on top of that symbol. So that symbol on your board can no longer score for anything else. So the timing of when you score these cards is critical. Score it too early, you risk blocking other scoring options. <sighs> Sorry. And then this one, it wants a cat and, and reptile as opposed to the kneeling woman. Okay, it may not be a woman, we'll see. We'll call it just Egyptian. So on these tiles, as you can see, we have yellow, blue, white, and red. Uh, blue are the Egyptian. Yellow is snake. White is a reptile. Red are cats. And these come in different shapes and sizes. So as you can see, some of them are only four uh, cubic squares. Some are five. So there's no guarantee what shape you'll find as you draft. So it says we don't need the first player marker. Basically, I'm going to be taking two of these items. The other two go to the AI, which will verify how that they how that works again. Okay. It said do not discard the remaining items. Story cards in your opponent's complete area next to the board. So they're automatically going to complete it. 
and then anyone making tiles above their board above the achievement board so really I need to move this stuff up here because this is the achievement board where it's saying place the tiles we don't need that and we don't need that okay well we know we want to go for a enclosed white chamber But what I think I might do is show you off a tile placement. So I, I think I want to be able to take this because that's going to help me get some tokens. And then, ooh, if I take either of those story cards, it's going to block off a white, which is going to be problematic because I want to score a white. But ultimately, There's points I don't want the AI to potentially be scoring. So you know what? Since I want the white one, I'm already going to be placing a blue and yellows. Working a blue sec sector, I'll go with the blue one to show it off. Okay. So it said, any story cards remaining, go over here like they've already scored it. So that's basically five points for the AI. Not ideal, but okay. These tiles are going to go above. Oh, so I think these symbols represent what this is saying. It says, uh, divide the tiles by animal. Place tiles with only snake or cat above the first achievement. So neither of these are just a snake or just a cat. Place the tiles with only humans or bird animals above the second. Uh, they may have changed the... the nomenclature or symbols they used to use but as you can see this is the white blue humans would go here too and then any dual colored is going to go here so before uh, so now it's time to place I'm going to be placing my own and show you how this works now so these tiles can be rotated mirrored any which direction you so choose they always have to be placed either touching the green reeds at, along your board or adjacent to a previously placed tile. Diagonal does not count in this game. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to turn it this way, place it on my board. And here's where the, the matching comes into play. So you get tokens for placing a tile next to a matching symbol on your mural board. So in this case, I've matched actually two things. I've matched the blue human and the yellow snake. So I actually get each of those tokens. So I get, I'll show you here. These don't actually need to go on my board, but I'll be collecting them. I'm just showing you what they earn me. These tokens I'll put up here because they can be spent on story cards later or achievements. Achievements being that I either want to create a very large single chamber with eight total icons. Not more, not less. Eight total icons. Or I could spend two story tokens of each type. Or I could connect opposite corners of my board with a river of any color. So that would have to be a continuous touching river or stream of one color moving from one end of the board to the other. Now granted if I use these purples in any way if I earn them and use them they count as wild of any color. If I was to do any of these I'd use one of my onks, put it on the board to score it. Now across this bottom if you score three story cards of a matching type you can also score or five of your match. So we have the first one is turning in tokens, second is river style stories, then you got the chambers or five of any one type. So as this goes on, I'll explain it as they happen as well. 
So now I have two storage. I don't have not created a completely enclosed chamber, so I can't score any of these two stories. So to score, your opponent goes first and may score each story achievement once. Place tiles above the random achievements. Your opponent may score them twice. Okay, let's verify what that means. So, how do they achieve or complete one or more achievements? If they have uh, three river chamber tokens, if your opponent has three story cards of a required type, they score the achievement and place any one of their ox in the next available reward space. They then discard their three leftmost story cards. So what I did not do, I need to lock this board down. I'm going to take one of my ox. Uh, copy it so I can make some for this player. Let's change their color uh, to a different one. Go something like red. If it will work. Oh, nope, the way they created this, it won't tint. Ah, that's why. It's around the corner. Uh, oh yeah, they, the way they created the token, only the edges flip because they put a, a picture on the token, but that's fine. I can figure this out. I'm going to just keep theirs upside down. So I'm going to place them on their board, uh, though honestly they may not actually need a full board to do this. I could just probably count them separate from mine. But if they had had three of these story cards, they could take one of their ox, put it on the achievement board. They had five identical uh, achievement cards. If there are five or more tiles above any achievement, your opponent scores that achievement. So where we've been placing tiles up here, those will play into achievements as well. So that's the gist of a round. It's one round of ten. So let's play this. I'll try to talk through what I'm doing for each one. If you have questions, feel free to post in chat or talk about how you're doing, how your day's been, what you've been playing lately. Okay. So this isn't a terrible option. Now bear in mind, remember I'm trying to create an enclosed area that has a blue and a white. Or an enclosed area with the white. Uh, so a every tile you place it's helpful to be able to have them touch certain areas on your board for extra scoring. So I am liking the potential of what I can do with this one for getting tokens. They've already picked up a chamber, so that's not a huge deal. Now, regardless of which two tiles, I, they're going to get at least one tile. Though I do like what I can get. Oh, right. Actually, the way I'm going to end up placing this to get my bonuses, I can leave both tiles. I'll actually work towards a token thing. Now, at most, you can have four story cards in progress at a time. So bear that in mind when you're choosing. So now that I've chosen these, we're going to give them the story card. Now this is a river style, so it goes next to the river symbol that is on the board. The chamber is basically the rectangle. And then we move these un unselected tiles to here. If you look, blue goes here, dill colored goes here. Verify again, if there are five or more tiles above them, there are not. And OK. 
Okay, we'll keep that in mind. If something triggers, I was reading it fast, but we're going on to the next round. Now, I've really enjoyed this at a two player game. Solo until you play it a couple of times may feel like it's a bit too much upkeep and verifying of things. Oh, I shouldn't have revealed those yet, as I never placed last round for myself. We'll act like I didn't draw those yet, and I'll show you where I plan to place, as this is going to gain me some more tokens. Actually, I have a couple choices, like I said. You needs to either be touching a tile you've already placed or touching the green. So I kind of have two choices here. I could either do this, because I'm planning to get a blue and a white bonus, uh, work on enclosing the blue over here, go up and around for that white, or I could do this, still get the same bonuses. I'm gonna flip it and go upward so it gets me a little bit closer to that other white because remember I'm trying to create a couple of different chambers as you can see white's touching white blue's touching blue again the newly placed tile so I get both of those tokens this is critical because I'm going towards a four blue story okay now it's the round where I can start picking I got ahead of myself. Now, part of the reason I probably won't choose either of these two stories, well, they do help the Automa. I'm already turning in blue, so that's going to be a lot of extra blue to try to get, and I have not started any kind of red. So that would be the last story I could grab of. A type so what's better for me in this instance is taking tiles so I want to focus on tiles that would gain me a variety of things such as more tokens because we know we want stuff so like a blue one is of course a very solid choice in this instance that I know I can grab something with And blue and red may not be a bad option as well. Because then I can at least attempt to place both of those in such a way that I can turn in my four blue tokens this round. So what we're going to do is move the river over here. They now have two. They have one of this type. And then this yellow goes above this achievement. So now I'm going to place. Now either I can work in, work towards the enclosed space I talked about. Or I can just straight up go towards getting bonuses because for example I could place as such right here getting me red and a blue I could do something like this getting me a blue if I really wanted to no I could do this right here wouldn't get me the blue but I could finish the inside of that but it would block off that that white one so unless I picked up a chamber that wanted one blue not as powerful now also if I went here to get the blue I could also then do something like uh, can I do it? Yep. If I mirror, rotate, flip, rotate, 
And again, this right here would also get me all of the tokens extra, but it would not enclose anything yet. Now granted, tokens is probably my bigger focus right now. It is a higher point value card. And I can still enclose other things as well later down the line. Because what I can also work towards is creating a chamber that has exactly eight creatures or, to or symbols in them while I'm doing this extended line. So I th think I do like that option. This That also opens up where I can place something later down the line. So I'm going to do that first one. It's going to give me one blue. I'll put it right there to show it off. I'm going to then place this one right here, getting me a red and another blue. There's the current tokens I have. Now we moved all their stuff, and like we said, we check if they score at all. If they had three of any of these, five of these, they don't, so then I can go to my scoring. I take my four, put them back in the bag, take this card next to my board. There'll be at least ten points for the end of the game. But when you do, when you score that, nothing over the top happens. But if I was to get three of them, I can turn it on for an achievement and then get myself a bonus. We'll take a look as things are loading. Okay, so I'm seeing a yellow river, but it wants to touch two white. I'm nowhere near doing something like that. But I also see a yellow white chamber. That wouldn't be too over the top difficult to do, as I do have a white and a yellow around here already. That All that would really take is something potentially just like that blue-red one coming down and covering that. So I could squirt this round if I so chose. Or I could take a deeper look at these tiles and see how can I work towards the achievements on the on the achievement board potentially like eight in one area it could be possible and I think I see a way to do it it may not hurt to show that off but I want to verify other potential possibilities before I do it as I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, as you might say, going too fast. That may end up being a few too many. Not unless I grabbed two different things at once, but then I wouldn't get the story card. So it's a balance. Do you want story cards throughout the game? Uh, preventing the AI from taking them or you take them yourself so you have to really balance of what you you're already already achieving what you could achieve and which going what is going to benefit you the most because remember I can just take the tiles try to get the tokens again work towards the achievement which I may end up doing in this case take this tile because I can get some major tokens from it. But I don't want to split myself, shoot myself in the foot per se. Okay. I think I can go 
slightly less tokens, but hit an achievement and show off this achievement. So let's do this. So let's sh shift their stuff over so that they will get some scoring in this round. Because of how many story cards they're getting. But it's going to happen. We can't avoid it. So first I place. I'm going to place this one as such right here. This grants me one white plus two yellow touching bonus. Two yellow and a white. And then I'm going to place direction to place it. I'm going to flip this, rotate it. Place this like this. It gets me a, t a white touching. Now first we do have to score the Automa. They have three river, so we're going to take one of their onks, put it in the river section right here. So they're going to be scoring 10 points for that before we can. So we can't share that space, so we won't be able to score seven at most. Okay, uh, next up, they do not have five tiles in, in either section, so then I can go on to my scoring. If we look on my board, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight creature icons and one enclosed chamber in the outer edge of the board counts for chamber enclosures. And so at this point, I can take an onk and score this first achievement. Now the key critical thing to this onk that I choose is I get a bonus. So let's zoom in on these bonuses. So this first bonus is I would get three of these one by one wild tiles to place next round. They do have to follow other placement rules. You just don't earn adjacency bonuses for next two icons, but they can count as any color for continuous rivers and such. I could get one of these tiles, which is like a one by four. I could get a two by two with a wild token. Or maybe I just want two wild tokens on this next one. Or say I really want more tiles. This allows you to draw three out of the bag. Keep one. And supposedly discard the other two. And the last one is repeat a power. Now, one of the key things we know I'm going for is token turn in over here. And I'm also going for chambers. Now, one of the chambers I need to enclose needs to be blue and white. So that four could get this, cover the yellow. It would get blue and white together, scoring that next round when I, after the placement. And then I could focus on getting this one white enclosed for the other one. So that wouldn't be too bad. So a one by four would work well. Or I could just take my wild tokens. You know what? I think doing the token one. So I'm going to place it over here on the, on the achievement board. Doing this one to, for my tokens, meaning I really only need one more red or one more blue, and I can turn all those tokens in for an, another achievement before he, before the automa does. And then at that point, I could probably turn and grab the wild, big wild piece. So that is the round. So we're going into round five at this point, almost halfway through the game. Now, of course, me talking and explaining about the game, it's going to take longer than a typical game.
Ooh, individual white and blue chambers. That would be harder to do. Ooh. Actually, I can achieve that. Let me verify a rule set. Just act like it's no longer in there. You just can't use it for scoring. Chambers uh, considered enclosed if it was board by all the slides by animal tiles, cartouche tiles, black tiles, or the border. So those black. Where's the first page that talks about the black? Black tiles. Some chamber and river stores show a black tile next to one or more animal icons. This means that when you complete the store, you must immediately cover the indicated icon. There are multiple icons of the type you choose from. You may choose which icon to cover. An icon covered with the black tile no longer generates story tokens and cannot be used to complete other story cards. Black tiles do not count as a color and do not contribute toward completing river stories or achievements. Any icon covered with the black tile no longer generates story tokens and cannot be used to complete other story cards. Black tile do not count as a color, do not contribute towards completing river stories or achievements. It's still an icon, I think. It's just covered. Well, no, it's covered. Because if you cover something, it's no longer that may be a rule I'd have to reach out to them about and verify because just the notation of it it's no longer a color but is it still a a active icon. It's not an active icon. Because that could be critical in the way I, I would have attempt to play this next set. I could go for the bigger red, turn the reds. I only require one more. turn in this tokens for that so I don't want those card I want the chamber or do I want tiles so I could set myself up to complete two things a story story in so many ways. If I leave the chamber one, they're going to score it this round. If I leave the token one, it takes only one more.
So I think I need to take one story card. I always don't want to prevent them to take them in chambers right now. No, oh uh, yeah, because I'm scoring chambers. I want to score the chamber set up. So I'm going to leave the cat. The cat took me one. I'm going to do that. So that means I need to do something that would allow me to encase blue and white. I could oh, well, honestly, I want to score them first. I'm going to try to chain these. Gonna take that, it's going to take that right one. And you're blocking another one. I need this one because I need another blue token. So I do this. I could get one of each. Get blue, get red. Red, no blue. Yeah, so I think I need to place it this way for maximum efficiency. So let's get our red and our blue for that. Now, we're gonna give these unused things over here. They get the double. They get this one. Do they score this round? Not yet. So then I can turn it in. One, two. One, two. One, two, one, and a wild. Turning in those will allow me to turn in, get this achievement. And another onk bonus, which I can then better use for my chambers. My chamber set up because I'm so very close to blocking multiple things in. I could take the three singles for next round, it would do a lot for me. This one, so I'm going to take off of this to get that bonus to place here. Both of those I can only do once. So now I really need to focus on the story cards. Halfway through the game. Okay. So I know I'm going to end up placing one of these tiles to create a blue-white chamber. So if I pick up a tile, it gives me, that allows me to block in a white. would be very beneficial.
also have river card options. A red river that touches white, yellow, and red. My current red river touches red and yellow, but no white. So that would be hard to... Now, if I had taken the singles, the wilds, I could easily drop a single one of those and count as a red river, I think. As is the rules. Blocking a yellow by uh, a river, any river. Touches three whites and three yellows. Let me see if it shows in the rule book. This one right here, technically my river touches that, but I don't know if it has to be one continuous color or if it could be mixed colors for that option. Okay, so it's any one color in this instance. Yeah, that's a really hard one to score. So like it'd have to, this one right here would have to be like all red or all blue or all white, all yellow, etc. Getting it to touch that many of the same icons, it would be super difficult to do. So it's I'm not even gonna try that. The red one I could probably achieve with a little more effort. Just not this round, so I think I want to focus on. Well, if I can f take that, and then whatever tile I take can help me with my goal of completing. The key is can I take them this tile? Because that will slow down their scoring a little bit. What would this achieve? I can block off, get blue and white. Scoring that one, that block with the white one. And I'd have to block, isolate a white if I could. Do I want to do these? I'm not liking my options. I'm not liking what I did to set myself up. Anything I can get that one and that one. Get my double I'll get blue by itself. Yeah, I need a trap in a white. Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay, here's what I 
Whoa. Do. I'm gonna take two straights. Let's go and give their stuff over. Puts it at three, puts it at three. Gives them another river. So we won't be scoring extra bonuses this round, but I can score quite a few cards. And hopefully I do this correctly in the way it's indicated. Yeah, I'm going to place that there. No bonuses. Place this one right here. No bonuses, but then I'll show you there, I think I understand the scoring correctly. Uh, an icon cover with the black tile no longer generates story tokens. Cannot be used to complete other story cards. Black tiles do not count as a color and do not contribute towards completing river stories or achievements. If I understand the rule correctly, which I may have to reach out and confirm, so bear with me on this one. So, first off, I've created a chamber with just white. Nice and easy. This one right here. And then I. Created a chamber right here with a blue and a white in it because the edges of the board count. So, but it has a black icon on it, so I have to cover the white. Now, if I understand the rule correctly, that icon is no longer considered there because it can't score anything, it's covered just like if you completely covered another one. So that's a chamber with just a blue in it, and I have a chamber with just a white in it. So that would score this one, covering the blue one now. And then this round, I also now have three chambers, so I can then move another onk over. And this time I want to, so I'm trying to do river red to touch white. Those singles could do it. Yeah, three singles either way would have to do it. It also gives me some flexibility. So I think I'm going to take this arc, place it here for the three single toss, and those get placed next round, not the round I grab them. This is, unless it was the very last round, then you scored, you grabbed them, then you can place them again to see if it updates any cards. Okay, let's keep this moving. I realized I did not update my stream name. I apologize to those who have checked it out. It's still relaxing music and a puzzle game of sorts. Oh, another red river. This time it would be touching two blue. Oh, okay. I could get that pretty easily. I had two more chambers. Not as critical for me. I don't think I'm going to go corner to corner. Mm -hmm. I could achieve it by the end. A little bit more work. I could get my Red River. 
don't want to lose. You know what, let's go for it. Red River touching blue, I could push for. I take also take that. Let them have some tiles here. Oh, basically they're gonna score at least one, if not two, achievements next round. Uh, they will end up scoring this. So let's go to score it last round. Take a knock. Let's do. It's gonna be critical in the way I do this because these are considered wilds. Is that how I want to do it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Let's pull that back for a moment. I can wait on those. The blue I could place for a blue bonus. If I want to get to that. Okay, uh, this is what I can do. Place these three wild here. This is critical. It won't give me token bonuses, but this counts as a red river. Let's make sure. Yeah. What page was it on? He just mentions cartouche tokens. Where's cartouche tiles? Whenever you earn a cartouche and you size point in reserve, placing a tile you do not collect the historic uh, may be counted as any. Animal tile when completing river stores and shipment C score phase. Two tiles might be treated as tiles of any color when completing each river. Any one color can be used to create the river on this current river. So this is a rule you could. I, I'm touching red, so technically it can be considered a continuation of the red. But for other instances where, say, it wasn't actually touching red, these cartouches can be counted as any color, which I would say is red. Currently touching to blue. So in this case, one of those two blues has to be covered. I'm going to cover this one. Oh, I'm going to cover the outside one in case I need another blue chamber of some sort. 
Mm, no, I'm going to cover the inside one because I don't think I'm going for chamber cards. I could. But now this river of red also touches a white, a yellow, and red. So I can score that one. I do have to block off one of the reds and block this one, which actually creates a chamber right here in case I need to score that or if I decide to find a card to score. Okay. Uh, four, four, four. No more. I think we already, yeah, we already scored that one. So next round. Oh, no, I need to place my other blue. Uh, this one it was a little bit trickier to decide. I'm uh, actually going to do this. This is going to be... I'm pushing to attempt to get a corner-to-corner -corner river. So that means I need some blue up here and blue down here. But I think I can get away with it. I do this right. So next round, three rounds left. So basically, as long as I see like at least one blue tile per round, I can potentially do it. Okay, I might. That might not be enough with that one. Okay, so let's look at the options here. The story cards to choose from a white river touching three reds. That would be very difficult to achieve at this point in time. Four yellow. Okay, well, technically, holding two. <laughs> because I do have one wild in hand. And if I score another river. If I pick up yellow, can I get a double yellow off of it? Don't think I can. So now it's about slowing down. So basically, I don't want it to take the. Prefer not to take the two colored ones. The white river, I don't care about. I'm going to let it take that one for sure. I'm just going to rotate it so I know I don't care. This one, I could probably figure out by the end. But that means it's going to get one of those for sure. So if I take both of these, it's going to score the token one right here. So which one am I more likely to achieve? Tokens or... Yellow, I could probably get by the end of the game. Because I'm holding two, I can get one this round easily. But then I have to do end round. The current blue one, I don't even think would benefit me at all. That wouldn't get me to corner to corner on either instance, yeah. So I'm better off working with this. And I'll just have to let it do some scoring. It's going to get that. I know it's going to get this one and I'll get the river solo scoring for them and then we discard the five Create a little pile. Do the same with these. Do a little gather. Come on, there we go. Put into a ball. We did that. Uh, they didn't score these other ones yet. Okay. I still need a place. But I don't want to block off 
the potential for corner to corner river. I could do this, give me the yellow. Not necessarily helpful in other regards. Can I? Ooh, there we go. Gets me an extra token out of it at minimum. And I'll show you why that matters, because I got a yellow. I got a white. And two tokens can be turned in at any time for either a wild one by one token or wild scarab. But I won't do it yet. I'm going to wait till next round. Just see if I need to do it for this snake card or if I need to do it for the corner to corner river. Come on, blue. Okay, well, I got yellow, so yellow and blue. Well, the blue would give me that corner at minimum. Okay, what are the other options? Yellow, river, white, blue, yellow. Be very difficult to hit up right now. They're all pretty insufficient. A white river, which I don't have good consistency of that basically touches all four that would be super hard to do I'm basically gonna let it score that again which just means I can't score the river onk at all because it would score it before me so unless I took both river cards which I don't think I can score either Leave the white, it's going to score that, which I've already scored, so not a huge deal. Because I couldn't get a double out of that. I think I'm going to take this one. Which will at least give me a, it's going to give me a yellow. So I'll select the other two to turn in. Can I go river? Yellow river. Touching. White. Blue. Yellow. Not a yellow close. Couldn't connect those. So the yellow river basically isn't possible. White river touching all four. Be hard to do, but it's at least not points going towards him. I'm just gonna have to let him have the river. No, since I can't do either river. I just take another tile prevent him from scoring that one because he's going to score river no matter what at this point blocking my seven so I can remove, stop him from taking another seven on the turn yeah I think that's my best play 
Take this. This can go up here. He's gonna get a river. Oop. There's a hand zone in the way. He's gonna do this. Add it to those two for another three. Plus that one. Means he scores another river, completely blocking me from scoring, getting river onk. But what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna do this. That's blue into the corner, but it gets me a yellow. The white. Or would I like to score? Uh, let's do this. Get a white for it. But I've created some chambers now in case I find a chamber card. For a little bit for another point at least. And I can wait to score till next round. Those tokens in case something else comes up. Okay, last round. Let's see what's uh, card. And remember, these story cards were randomized out of a 50 card deck, so there's no guarantee what was going to come out. Oh, of course. I need it red and yellow together. Come on, blue. This bag should be randomized. Uh, perfect. Okay. So I know I'm taking that blue. No matter what. That's going to get me a corner to corner. Chamber. Can I get a blue, red, white? Blue, red. I can cover it. White won't be there. I can get another. Oh no, I will get an onk out of it. When I onk. So, for the placement, I won't get anything. But I can turn those in for this one. I can get at least two. I can get one single, one by one. Red and yellow, red and yellow. It's gonna cover a single I had one more token. So it's dead. Since I can't do that. Can't score any of those again. may have put too many eggs into a single basket, per se, and not plan this correctly, and hoped for certain things to come out, and they didn't, unfortunately.
Yeah, because whatever I take here, I can't score either of the two stories. If anything, I prevent him from taking, or Automa, from getting extra points off the story card. So they're going to get that one. Oops, don't just over zoom. That's going to go there. That's going to go there. No, no. Not another three, okay. Well, if anything, I can do this. The Cupacabra thing, the jig. Oh, no, I have to rotate. There we go. Corner to corner blue. If you. Oh, no. I missed one. It's not going to count. is life. I thought I was going to get it. I'll backtrack. Maybe. Do I want different tiles then? In this round. Since I realized I can't do it. Would one tile allow me to score any one of these? I don't think so. There is a physical good way to block in a red and a yellow together. Or a well. No, I do have a way to blue, red. No, because the yellow is right smack in the middle of them. Yeah, so I might as well just score for extra tokens. Not that it makes a huge difference. Some mistakes as I played. Not a huge deal. I'll just do what I was doing. It is what it is. Well, once I realize that, I might as well place it somewhere different. But I'm going to turn these in to at least complete the story. And I'm so frustrated the way they set this up. could technically turn in these two for one of these. Uh, I'll grab this one to show there's a, a way to finagle it. Because if I did, no, that wouldn't finagle it. Oh no, I got it. It needs to be rotated. Flipped. To here. Gets me a blue. I trade in two random tokens. For a wild token. Or a wild tile. And I'm going to block it here. And I do a little blocky here. And now I got it. Close chamber of yellow and red, which would have scored that. And then scoring, you would add up which of these achievements you earned, which, if you look at mine versus theirs, and then typically add up all the cards as well. But let me see if so, solo scored they. Oh. 
Oh, they discard. I should have seen that. Oh, so every three they did, they were discarded, so they don't actually score. So I have a ch I saw have a chance. These don't score. They opt with those. Okay, so they're going to score these and the achievement board, and they'll score my cards and the Ankh achievements that I achieved. Let's score the AI first. Facing down, they got 7, 10, 17, plus another 17. That's going to be 34. Plus 7 is 41. Plus 10 is 51. 61, 68. Ooh, good score for them. What was I able to achieve? So at the achievement board, 10, 20, 30. Uh, over there, that's uh, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 71. Okay, so I still beat this the Automa. Just barely, though. That's a pretty close and tough game. So, yeah, at least it felt well balanced. So, that's one of the key things about a game like this when you're playing solo. Um, that it's not just a beat your own score, which sometimes works. Granted, there's some good games that do it very well. But it's going to feel like it's going to score slightly different every time. Depending on the. And it's highly dependent on the choices you make. It is not just a random card deck or a random roll of die. It is everything you're not taking, it's taking. So you have a way to dictate that score as you go as well. So you're not fully playing two different hands, but you're setting them up to score, and then you're setting yourself up to score to beat it. So it's going to stay pretty balanced, because if you focus too much on yourself, don't pay attention to them, they could outrun you. Or if you pay fully attention to them, just playing defense, you're not going to set yourself up. So there's a very fine-tuned balance here that I've found interesting. Now, some people won't like that these story cards that we're playing, there's actually 50 of them. Well, there's 12 starting ones, and then there's 50 standard story cards shuffled depending on number of players. You take out so many. And so you're not going to see the same ones every game. Uh, you can't guarantee that the uh, amount of river versus chamber and token ones are going to be consistent. So you may be thinking your strategy is one way, but then you have to change in the middle of the game because you realize they're not coming out. The tiles, you're not going to see all the tiles. Like There's still 38 tiles in the bag at this point in time. Um, so there's going to be a lot of tiles you potentially won't see. So you can't hedge your bets on any one particular color, shape, or combination thereof. So there's a lot of planning you have to do, but there's also a higher bit of luck in this game than you're used to seeing in a lot of these tile line games. But it's balanced in that way because you're not going to see everything. But it also makes it feel fresh every time you play again. So I've enjoyed that. This, So like I said, this was Cartouche by Coffee Bean Games. Uh, you can find them at Twitter, Facebook, under Play Coffee Bean. 